Hi everyone. Today's video is on the topic physiology of phonation. It's been long since I posted a new video, right? I had been busy. Right now, I am doing a laryngology fellowship at Dr. J. Umas Institute of Laryngology, and these are the teachers I have. None other than Dr. J. Umar sir and Manju madam. They are the best teachers I have ever had, and mind it, I have had a lot of good teachers right from my UG days at Trishu Medical College and my PG days at Trivandrum Medical College and still I would rate them as the best due to a lot of reasons and I would like to acknowledge them before starting this video on Physiology of Phonation. <laughs> on hearing this song, I have always wondered what is the role of tongue in voice production? Is it not the vocal folds that produce the voice? But no, I am not just talking about the physiology of phonation here. I am also talking about how speech is produced. And for speech to be produced, it is not just phonation that is needed. It requires resonance as well as articulation. And for that, you need your tongue. It has got a big role to play. And all those things you will realize once I finish this presentation. But first of all, let us go to human vocal apparatus can be compared to that of a string instrument like guitar. The guitar has got its string stretched like this and below the guitar you are having a huge resonating chamber to amplify the sound. And also you have got certain things to adjust the tension of the string of the guitar. Okay, that is seen here. You can uh, rotate it to increase the tension. Okay, so these are the basic parts of a guitar. In case of human vocal apparatus, you have got vocal folds which play the role similar to that of the string. Okay, and these vocal folds, when it vibrates on expiration, that is when the air is passing from the lung through the vocal folds, it vibrates. And this vibrated sound, the sound produced is of low frequency. It is called the fundamental frequency. This uh, fundamental frequency voice is getting amplified as it passes through the resonating chambers of the throat, oral cavity and the nasal cavity. Resonating chamber is amplifying the voice produced by the guitar. Okay, similarly, the voice produced by the vibration of the vocal folds get amplified by the resonating chambers in our uh, supraglottic tract. Okay, these are the basic things that you have to understand. And yes, there is an actuator here in the form of the force that you are applying for plucking the string, right? Similarly, the actuator in case of the human vocal apparatus is the air that you expire out. These are the three major things that you have to num know. That is vibrator, actuator and resonator. Vibration is on the vocal folds. Actuator is the air that is passing in between the vocal folds and the resonating chamber is formed by the oral cavity, throat and the uh, nasal cavity. Okay. And apart from that, there are certain things that you can understand with the help of this guitar. What is that? You have the guitars arranged in the order of their increasing mass, right? As you can see here, this is the first string, then this is the second string. And if you listen carefully, you can understand that the pitch of the sound is going down, right? When you are going like this, the pitch is coming down. Why is it so? This is because this is because the thickness of the strings has increased and in turn the mass of the string has increased. So mass is inversely proportional to the pitch. Similarly, when the vocal fold mass increases, that also will cause the uh, decrease in pitch. Okay, that is why in case of Rengis edema, when the mass is increased, the pitch of the vocal folds come down. Okay, and that is the first thing. Mass is inversely proportional to the pitch. The second thing that you have to remember is the inverse relationship of length and the pitch. This you can understand easily by catching hold of the string with the help of the left uh, fingers. Okay, left arm fingers. When you are catching hold like this, what happens is, if you listen carefully, if this is the pitch initially, when you are catching hold like this, what happens is, 
the pitch has increased okay so when you are bringing down the length of the vibrating segment what is happening the pitch is actually uh, increasing okay when the length is coming down the pitch is increasing that means length is also inversely proportional to the pitch similarly in human vocal apparatus also when the length is increased what happens the pitch will come down that is why uh, the male vocal apparatus is having a pitch which is lesser than that of the females because the length of the human vocal apparatus is more than that of females okay the third thing that you have to remember is the tension okay tension can be increased with the help of this screw here okay when you are rotating here what happens is that the strength the tension will increase and when the tension is increased what happens is that the pitch will again increase okay the pitch will be seen as increasing by increasing the tension okay so these are the three things that can be used to manipulate the pitch of the uh, voice and the pitch is dependent upon the vocal folds okay so what are these three things they are the length tension and mass of the vibrator that is the vocal folds okay now coming to further details on the vibrator that is the vocal folds you know only the anterior three fifth of the vocal folds are vibrating the rest two fifth is formed by the vocal process of arytenoid it doesn't vibrate and this vocal folds are having a cover body mechanism as described by hirano the cover is formed by the epithelium and the superficial layer of lamina propria and the superficial layer of lamina propria is called the ringy space and this is very important for effective vibration of the vocal folds and then you have the uh, intermediate layer uh, forming the transition zone and finally it is the uh, body that is formed by the vocalis and the thyroid muscle so you have the cover formed by the superficial layer of lamina propria and the epithelium the intermittent and the deep layer which forms the vocal ligament forms the transition zone and vocalis muscle forms the body okay now what is happening how is the vocal fold vibrating just before phonation the vocal folds abduct to breathe in air and that is what is known as the pre phonatory inspiratory phase and this is done with the help of posterior cricoarytenoid muscles okay posterior cricoarytenoid muscles when they contract what happens is that there is abduction of the vocal fold in fact it is the only abductor of vocal folds so with the help of posterior cricoarytenoid muscle contraction you are having the pre phonatory inspiratory phase soon after that the adduction of vocal folds occur for adduction of the anterior two third you have the thyroid node muscle and for adduction at the level of vocal process of arytenoid node you have the lateral cricoarytenoid muscle and the posteriormost part of the glottis for that you have the intraarytenoid node muscle formed by the uh, oblique arytenoid node as well as the transverse arytenoid node so when all these things contract together what happens is that the vocal folds get adducted and then what happens is that the expiratory air forces apart the vocal folds from its inferior lip okay so you are having a uh, an opening phase open phase closing phase and close phase to constitute the vibratory cycle how is this happening the opening phase occurs when the air pressure the subglottal pressure increases and when it overcomes the minimum threshold pressure for phonation what happens is that the vocal folds are getting peeled apart and it starts at the level of inferior lip and finally the superior lip also gets peeled apart releasing a puff of air and because of this sudden rush of air through a constricted area what happens is there is negative pressure created by the bernoulli's phenomenon and also due to the elastic recoil of the vocal folds what happens is that uh, it again closes and this closing phase occurs from the lower lip and finally it gets closed completely this is what is constituting the vibratory cycle of the vocal folds okay the cycle of adduction aerodynamic separation and recoil constitutes what is meant by the vibratory cycle okay so when the vibratory cycle occurs to increase and decrease the pitch of the vocal folds what do you have you have got certain muscles right 
you have got the cricothyroid muscle that can increase the tension of the vocal folds and along with that uh, the thyroid muscle can actually cause a little bit of relaxation of the vocal folds and and because of these muscles the way it acts on the tension of the vocal folds that results in various vocal cord registers okay and about these different registers i'll be dealing with in the next section when vocal folds vibrate there are various frequency vibrations produced which are the multiples of the fundamental frequency these overtones that get selectively amplified by the resonating chambers that is the nose the mouth and the throat are what is known as the formants so how does this amplification occur it occurs when uh, the voice passes through these resonating chambers that is why i told you the tongue is very important in case of phonation how because it is a position of that tongue that determines how big the resonating chamber is for example you can actually say a ah, or a ah. a oh. when you are saying it a oh, the tongue is going posteriorly and that decreases the throat resonance and it will be a closed throat resonance when you are saying it as a ah, the uh, voice will be heard better and when you are similarly when the tongue is having a superior carriage that also can decrease the volume of the oral cavity and that can reduce the oral resonance and also with the nasality when it is reduced that is also or causing the decrease voice projection so it is important that you improve your nasality to increase the voice projection so nasal resonance is also important and another important thing uh, the tongue has got to play is in articulation okay when the uh, voice that is finally produced is uh, becoming meaningful words it requires articulation with the helps of lip teeth and tongue now what are the theories of phonation the earlier theory used to be that it is according to the uh, nerve impulses that are getting fired rhythmically that results in the mucosal waves to occur now what is the nerve supply of vocal cord you know that posterior cricothyroid is supplied by the cricothyroid nerve and most of the intrinsic muscles of larynx are getting supplied by the cricothyroid nerve except for the cricothyroid which is being supplied by external laryngeal nerve which is a branch of superior laryngeal nerve so this neurochronic theory was later disproved by vandenberg through his experiment and he proved that it is nothing to do with the uh, nerve supply he used cadaveric larynx to prove that and the his theory is what is meant by the myoelastic aerodynamic theory and according to this theory it is the aerodynamic forces within the larynx it is the expiratory force that is interacting with the uh, myoelastic properties of the uh, vocal folds that result in the vibration to occur okay so that's all for this video i'll be coming with the next video which is about vocal fold registers until then goodbye